This conference that, will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, this this uh, this uh, reporting module uh, supports lot of uh, different types of queries. So we'll be seeing some examples that are commonly used, as well as during the registration, some of them have asked for some examples. So we'll try to cover as much as possible. Uh, uh, and if you have any further questions, uh, you can please uh, put it on the chat. Uh, our colleagues will take care of it or we'll take uh, some of the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, we are um, recording this session uh, so that if someone needs the recording uh, after the session, we can share. So we are muting all the lines so you can use the chat window if you have any questions or issues during the call. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I'm uh, Purnima. I'm the product manager at Krishagni. Uh, so today's uh, session I'll be taking. So let me. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, we'll start with the agenda. So these are some of the topics that we will be covering. Uh, we'll start with some basic uh, topics like how to create a new query, how to save and share it with others users. So you can. Uh, save any query so that you don't have to recreate commonly used uh, queries. Uh, you can also schedule queries, which means that you can automatically run the queries on a regular interval and you can import export uh, query as well. Uh, then we'll move on to some uh, advanced topics. Uh, uh, so uh, specifically these two topics uh, I have with me Christine from University of Pittsburgh. She's one of our powerful uh, uh, users for a query interface. Uh, and um, so she'll be presenting some examples of these two topics uh, based on the feedback of, uh, you know, their users. So we have added these uh, new features. So I'll be, uh, it will be very valuable to hear from the end user how they use this feature and uh, why we, uh, you know, enhanced uh, query module to include these features. And then uh, I'll continue with some of the ad other advanced topics like uh, you know calculated searches, which we call as temporal queries, hierarchical queries to do searches based on uh, query on parent uh, specimens and things like that. And finally, some summary-based reports uh, using the using the query module. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, uh, start with. Uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, who can create queries. So anybody who has access to uh, create queries. Uh, so there is a separate role for it. Uh, so in open specimen, uh, if you see uh, for the new users, just to give a quick uh, introduction about roles. So whenever you create user, you associate a user with specific roles. And every role is associated with different operations and what data you user can access. So if you see here, uh, this is an administrator role, which is the highest role and they have access to everything. And one of the uh, uh, resource or role is query. So whoever has access to do, you know, create update uh, queries, they will be able to add a new query and so on. So that's about the role. But once you create a query, what data is visible is uh, dependent on the role assigned uh, for the user based on the site and the protocol. So by CP, I mean collection protocol. So when you create a user, you assign the user to a specific site or a group within your institute. And within that group, there might be multiple protocols or studies that are going on. So you give access to you know combination of this. So based on this, the user can query only the data belonging to you know the particular site or protocol. And in addition to this, you can also control who can see PHI data or patient identified data. This includes you know patient names, patient MRNs, SSN, and so on. So uh, this also can be uh, controlled using the roles, and based on that either the user will be able to access the PHI data in the query module or uh, you know those those fields will be hidden. So these are uh, just a, a quick highlight about how data is controlled even when you're doing queries. And of course, uh, uh, there is since there is 100% audit trail, anything that the user does using the query module is also audited. 
so and uh, the you know the admins can uh, you know look at the audit using this uh, here so when you uh, in when you log in into the system and go to queries this is where you use the reporting module or the queries module and here you have the query audit feature the admins can use this to see which users are doing what kind of uh, queries uh, whether it's account based query database query whether it was a saved query and so on and when i click on a particular query it also gives me like a sql of uh, the query as such yeah so that's the query audit so now um, let's dive into you know creation of actual reports and how you can get the data out so in most of the other you know applications the you know the, the main restriction or limitation is how you get the data out usually you are dependent on your it or you know you have to go back to the database or depend on any other external tools to do reporting but in open specimen um, you know we have made sure that the user interface is uh, easy to use and it is also uh, you know at the same time it can support a uh, lot of complex queries complex use cases so that you can get the data out easily yeah so uh, let let's now look at creating a new query so we'll take a, a you know a, a simple example for this so here if you see uh, um, you know you can imagine you get a request from a researcher that you're looking for they're looking for a specific type of specimens and this can be look something like this like a female gender patients diagnosed with a specific uh, you know clinical diagnosis and uh, from this kind of patients i'm looking for available plasma ends or serum samples so let's look at how to do that so now once you go to the queries from the menu or from the home page you uh, land in on this page uh, typically when you install open specimen it comes with some default queries so you will only see this default queries folder and some uh, already canned queries or saved queries for you for reference uh, so these are some of the common examples that are you know used by others so you will be able to refer to that now to create a new query so there is a button here so you click on that create here and uh, this will take you to a page where you can uh, create a new report or query yeah so this has different sections so let's look at each one of them so the first drop down that you see here this is to filter out data for a specific protocol uh, if you want you can choose a specific protocol or you can leave it as none which means that it will look across different protocols yeah uh and of course again the list of protocols you see is dependent on what kind of privilege or access you have if you have access to only say one protocol then you will see only one protocol in that drop down so on and the next step would be then adding filters though filters are categorized under different uh, you know uh, objects or uh, data here so uh, if you want to add filters on patient data you click on participant it will list on all the patient uh, related fields including the custom fields so we'll come into custom fields uh, in a later example so i'll show you now how to add a filter on gender so because in our example i'm looking for female gender patient specimens so what i need to do is i click on the field and i get list of operators and these list of operators change based on the type of field so since this is a text field or a drop down field it shows me equals not equals all and so on whether if it's a numeric field it shows a different set of operations like not less than greater than or so on so let me add a condition now gender equals female so that's the first condition i add so the second condition i want to add is so uh, diagnosed with a specific uh, diagnosis so that's under visit so i'll add that condition here yeah 
So I added that condition. And now the next condition is on the specimen. That is a specimen type. So I'm going to add that condition. So now I'll choose a different operator. So this is an interesting operator. Is one off lets you include more than one condition value. So it is if you have used you know database queries, it's something similar to in and not in, not in. So I'm going to now select more than one value here. So I can type in and select. Yeah, so here if you see I have added these conditions that is female gender. Uh, diagnosis is uh, this particular diagnosis and uh, I'm looking for serum or plasma specimens and I want to make sure these specimens exist in my repository. So for that there are different ways to do it. Either you say that you know the quantity is greater than zero or I want to make sure they're stored in some freezer. So what I'll do is container name exists. So this is another uh, useful operator. If you don't want to put a specific condition value but you just want to say that that value exists so you can use this operator. So this is how I have added my conditions which are filters and if you see here there is an expression that gets added by default and is the operator between every filter that you add but you can you know click on it or use this operator which is or now, as of now I leave it as and so once you have added all the filters you can click on get count to make sure that there are some matching results. So there is one patient with five helicots of plasma or serum which is existing in some container. So I'll go ahead and view the records. So if you see here it will uh, show me all the uh, re uh, results here. Uh, these are some default columns that are shown and these default columns yeah. can also be configured. I'm just going to mute the lines. Okay. So now here uh, if I want to change the columns that I want to see I go here. Here I can choose any columns I want. Suppose I want to also see the name of the patient and I want to see uh, maybe the container details about the specimens. I'll just say that and you can also rename the columns if you want. So this is if you want in the results view you want to rename the column. This is useful if you are using this output to you know send it to someone or you know maybe you want to use that as an input to something else. You can rename the columns this way and say done. Uh, uh, the other thing you can do is uh, you can also rearrange the columns if you want to change the order of the columns. Suppose I want the names after my subject ID. I'll just I just drag and drop here. So this will change the order of the columns in my results view. Now I'll say done. So as you see here, I added few more columns that is the name and container fields. Then I changed the column headers and also you see that uh, the, the in, in terms of container it shows me a uh, lot of details like what is the box name that it is stored in what is the location and also it shows uh, you know the whole hierarchy like which freezer which rack and uh, what kind of uh, shelf it is stored in and so on the whole hierarchy and so this this results if you want you can export it into a csv sub, uh, file that is a comma separated value file uh, which you can open it in excel uh, so it will look something like this so it will look something like this and if you want to save this you can save it as well uh, before saving I'm, I'm going to show you one more uh, important thing that is if you want you can also make uh, the filters as parameterized so for that instead of equals I'll make it all I'll show you what that means. Yeah. So here I'm going to make diagnosis as parameterized and say view records. So here if you see now the result count increased. The reason being I didn't put a condition specific condition on the diagnosis. I said show me all diagnosis and make it parameterized. When I say make it parameterized it's going to show those filters in the results view so that I can dynamically choose what diagnosis I want. 
so here in the result view now i can say okay now show me you know results for these two diagnoses it's going to refresh the results right away so this way uh, i'll be able to see the results uh, uh, instantly here so this is you these parameterized filters are useful when you're saving queries so you can make more you know generic queries for your end users and uh, you will be able to uh, you know uh, just make it uh, have it as parameterized conditions so now i'm going to go ahead and save this query so serum or plasma from female patients yeah so now once i save this if i go back to the queries so this get this got saved in my dashboard and by default it is saved only for me but i can share it with others in order to share what i need to do is i select i assign it to a folder so you can you are kind of organizing all the saved queries for a specific uh, you know set of users so here i am going to put it as say folder name say just webinar and i'm going to share it with say some specific users yeah and create so this will get created as a folder and when you know shrikant or divya for with whom i have shared when they log in they will be able to see this webinar folder under their shared folders and when they click on it they'll see all the queries that i've shared with them so this is how you can save and share it with others so now uh, uh, we saw how you can create a new query with different filters and you can also uh, save the query and share it with others so we'll move on uh, and we'll see how to create a query with custom fields uh, so uh, for new users what i mean by custom forms or custom field is we have a feature where you can add new fields to the database dynamically that is Uh, open specimen comes with a default data model you know to capture basic demographics specimen details and so on suppose you want to add new fields to the database which is say, specific to your study then you can use this custom form feature where you can add new fields and this will be like any other field so you'll be able to do reporting based on that and this needs no you know uh, so coding uh, you can do it all through the user interface so for this we'll see an example uh again the female gender patients who smoke more than one pack per day so this field that is smoking history of the patient is actually a custom form so i'll just quickly show you how that looks and i will yeah so this uh, particular protocol if i go to the patient so these are what is the default fields that is the default demographic fields like name subject id national identification number mrn gender race and so on so if i want additional fields i can use the forms feature and here if you see i have added a patient smoking history using which i can add all these details yeah so now what i'll do is i'll show you how to create queries for adding custom fields for adding custom fields into your uh, query you need to make sure you select the protocol for which the custom form is attached so uh, if the form is attached to all protocols then you don't need to select the protocol but in my example the smoking history that i saw is attached to this particular study so i need to select that then only under participant i will see if you scroll down all the custom fields and forms appear at the end after all the uh, default fields so you scroll down and you will here if you see i have the smoking history uh, thing so i can say number of packs is greater than 1 so this is how you add conditions on custom fields that is you first select the protocol for which the form is attached if it is not attached to a specific cp you don't have to do that or if it is attached to a group a collection protocol group you can choose the group and then you uh, uh you select the level under which the form is attached in my case the form is attached to a patient so then i scroll down i select this field and add it so then similarly if you want to add any other additional conditions you can just add that and say get count so you there are four patients female gender patients who smoke more than one pack per day then i say view records 
as i said always the default view shows certain columns but i can always change the columns by choosing the things that i want since i am adding conditions on this i'm going to select these two condi fields and say done so here if you see uh, they, these are the patients and these are the packs per day information so these two are custom fields you can add filters on them as well as you can include them in the results view so this is as you see it's like any other field so these custom fields you can imagine if you have integrated your system with other clinical systems like you know edc software like open clinica red cap or maybe uh, epic and so on if you have pulled the data from those systems and if you have added new custom fields then they can also be queried so you can do integrated queries this way yeah so this is a, a, a example for how you can do queries based on custom fields oops sorry yeah so uh, we'll move on to see how you can schedule reports uh, so for that when you save a query you have an option to schedule so if you uh, so this you see this three dotted menu so you have this in lot of places in open specimen this is to uh, do additional fee, uh, you know functions on specific record so i'll say schedule and you see that you can schedule a particular query on a monthly weekly daily and quarterly basis and uh, this this now can you can notify certain users uh, this will allow you to automatically run the reports and they, it will notify them over email that the report is ready to download so one of the uh, you know some of the common examples are uh, you want to find anticipated visits in next month uh, you uh, where you can do uh, things like uh, if you have a planned protocol where uh, you know that you have some visits that you are anticipating you can do that and the other example might be you want to just find all the specimens collected in last month so you will be able to do that kind of uh, queries and uh, set it up on a monthly basis so that you just get a report of what kind of specimens got collected in the uh, you know previous month and so on so these are some of the examples uh, for which you can use the schedule query feature okay so these were some of the basic features of open specimen uh, so now i'll see uh, uh, now i'll move on to some of the uh, uh, you know more advanced uh, topics uh, and uh, i'll be uh, handing it over to christine uh, so uh, uh, christine are you there all right. Thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah. Hi, Christine. So the Christine is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, far user of query module. So she's from University of Pittsburgh. Uh, we have been working with them from past uh, four to five years. Uh, so uh, we have done a couple of enhancements for them based on their feedback. So uh, uh, we have made you presenter. Uh, are you able to share your screen? Yes. Can you see it now? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, hi, everyone. So to start, I just pulled up um, a query that I made this morning. Um, just a little bit of background. Uh, here at the University of Pittsburgh, we are involved in pancreatic cancer research. Um, so you're going to see a lot of this, just um, pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Um, it's the abbreviation for it. Um, so one of the things we might want to look at is how many people that we have enrolled who have sporadic PDEC, which basically means they don't have any predisposition to getting pancreatic cancer either um, through a known genetic mutation or through an unidentified genetic mutation, but um, a familial predisposition to it. Um, so here you can see my query that I have built. Um, we have multiple different diagnoses that somebody might have. So on our diagnoses page, we have subforms. So we needed the ability to properly query these subforms um, and be able to eliminate different subform answers without um, 
giving false information. So for example, um, every once in a while we'll come by somebody who we think has pancreatic cancer, but the biopsy is just inconclusive. And so we mark these as a do not use. Um, that ends up as one of their current diagnoses. So if somebody is thought to have pancreatic cancer, but it's just inconclusive, they would have a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer and the do not use. Well, if we were looking for querying for somebody with pancreatic cancer before we had the ability to do subqueries, we would say that the, that the diagnosis equals pancreatic cancer. Well, we wouldn't be able to see if they also had the diagnosis of this do not use. So now that we have the ability to do subqueries, we can build in that we want to see pancreatic cancer and that we don't want to see um, ones that are do not use, even though they're both um, at, at the level of the same subform. Um, so not only were, were subqueries necessary for just being able to do some of these more complex queries when we have so many different subforms, um, but honestly, they also just make it a little bit easier. You have um, my last filter here. Um, again, we're very interested in genetics, and of course, there's so many different genes that you birth out. Well, these are the specific ones that I'm interested in for this particular query. Well, now I can just save this, put it in a, in a folder, and all of my colleagues can go and pull this up into their queries instead of rebuilding it every single time. So it just makes it a little bit more user-friendly for us as well. Um, so basically what this query says is that we want to see somebody with pancreatic cancer that's enrolled in this particular study. Um, I chose to do it at this level in the filter instead of doing it at the collection protocol level up here. Um, just so any of my colleagues, like I said, it, this is in a shared folder. If they want to do it in one of our other shared studies, they can easily change it then without losing all of the other filters. Um, so again, if you have somebody that's a little bit more privy on query usage and is sharing and building the queries for the rest of the group, um, that's one of the things you can do to make sure that everybody can um, play with um, basically like a base query. Um, ag again, I wanted to put in that we don't want to see the, the folks that are a do not use. Um, and if you click on any of these subquery, uh, it'll actually pull out. So I clicked on this one here and it pulls out the, the query that it's referring to. So as you can see, that would be very messy to do every single time. Um, but the gist of it is um, that this is looking at people that have a genetic diagnosis of these various genes. And the genes are of course, written in because you can't really create a drop down with all these different genes. We have hundreds of thousands, upon thousands, really, that we would be entering in all the time. So uh, a drop down just wouldn't make sense for that. We have to use the contain function to search it then. Um, so making this subquery and listing out which of the particular genes I'm interested in for this query, for this purpose makes the most sense for this. And like I said, each of these is a link where you can click out and see the actual query that um, is, is the subquery in this overall query here. Um, so just for example, I'll go ahead and pull out this do not use one um, so that you can see what I mean by a lot of our forms have multiple um, diagnoses. So there. So here's one who has pancreatic cancer and um, this particular one we marked as do not use because the, the sample um, was very, very old um, and we don't have proper records for it. So we added in the 666. 
Now, before subqueries, if I said that I wanted to see anybody with pancreatic cancer, whenever I was looking in the columns, this diagnosis would not show up because I just told the system that I wanted to see pancreatic cancer. So I would get a hit on this particular participant, and I would see in the columns that they have pancreatic cancer, but I would have no idea that I shouldn't be using them. And the vice versa of that would be if I, I'm querying for people with a 666, I wouldn't be able to see what other diagnoses they have um, because the way we built our form that made the most sense to us at the time was we have these multiple subforms um, with multiple different entries because obviously people can have multiple very relevant diagnoses and multiple very relevant indications. Um, so the subqueries was just the best way to query these. So let me go back from the, each of these subqueries and show you actually how I've added them in. Um, so the way you do that is a common thing we'll do is when we send samples out somewhere, the place will say to me, we want more samples, but we want a participant that we've never had before. So before the ability to do subqueries, yes, it was very easy to say, hey, I've never sent this particular sample to them before. But it, it was hard to purse out if I had sequential blood samples, let's say, on a participant that I hadn't sent one of their other blood samples to this institution. With subqueries, it's very easy to eliminate those. So the way to do that is either to call up the participant ID or the, the PP ID. Um, those are both specific to the participant. And now I'm gonna say is not one of records from another query. And I will pull up one of the other queries, which again, you can save them all. So these are ones that I use all the time. I've made ones that are specimen sent to, and then I can just pick out um, any, any of these will be a five. We'll just use the Bake Off for the example. Um, so this is was a collaborative project um, between multiple institutions. And if I don't want to overlap with any of the participants that I sent there, this is now taking all of them out of the equation and I don't have to worry about maybe I sent one sample there and I have another one banked. Well, I don't want to send that one either. This takes care of it. Um, and all of these were built in the same manner. You just go to the participant ID and then you can select is one of, like we did here, to choose the diagnosis or is, is not one of. Um, and of course, as Romina had shown you, you can edit your columns and everything from that point. Um, so these are all of my participants who don't have a genetic predisposition, predisposition to cancer and that I haven't sent for that particular project and that I would be okay to go ahead and send for this next project. Um, all right, does anyone have any questions about the subquery feature? Yeah, uh, thanks, Christine. Uh, that was really helpful. Uh, so the other uh, feature, if you can just talk about it or if you can show, that would be great was the newly created feature in 8.0 that is limiting specimens by uh, quantity. Uh, would you be able to- Sure, sure. And I started a query for that as well. Again, one of the things I, I love is I, I just saved this base query for all of my colleagues so that any of them can easily use it now too. Um, this is built off of a recent 
shipment that we just did where I knew exactly which samples that I wanted to send. Um, and we needed to send four milliliters of plasma on each of those samples. Most of our samples are split into many, many, many aliquots, small aliquots. So obviously, reason being is you want to avoid doing free spas when places are asking for small volumes. Most places ask for only um, like maybe 2.5 milliliters um, top, so sometimes less than that. Um, this particular place had asked for four milliliters, and I noticed recently we've been getting a lot of requests for larger volumes, either four or six milliliters of either serum or plasma. And so when I know exactly which sample I need that from, it can be very strenuous to go through the cart and add each of those in. So what Bernina and everyone over at Christianity has done was made that much process much simpler. So now all you need to do is to go ahead and put in, call up which visits, which samples you're interested in, put the proper um, columns in. There's certain columns that are absolutely necessary for this to run properly. Um, that includes things like PPID, registration ID, um, and you can see them here. And so the way you go about this is you go into the columns then, and Pormina had already shown you how to do all of these. Well, now you're going to go to reporting options. And there's a new option here called limit specimens by human live quantity. And you can either do it by participant or by parent specimen. Um, for this particular shipment, uh, each Participant, each case only had one sample, so I could really click either of these and it would work fine. Um, and like I said, we needed um, four mils. And so now instead of going through and trying to figure out how many of each aliquot I need, everything is right here. And you'll see these are all the same patient. And if you add those up, it'll be four mils. And so I can just select all and add them all to my cart. Whereas before, I would have to go into the patient and look at the blood collection because I wouldn't know offhand which of the samples had been sent before. And so I really need to go in and figure out which, like I said, because they're all at each of the aliquots is a, a different. Um, very small quantity. So I would need to go in and see which of the 0.5 milliliter aliquots are available. And if we didn't have any of those available, which of the 0.25, I couldn't just assume and add them all to cart in a bulk manner before. Um, and this allows it, as you see, I, it's just, um, I, select them all and add them to the cart right there. It's very smooth. That's all. OK, uh, uh, great. Thanks so much. And uh, again, uh, thank you for your valuable inputs. So uh, as I said, uh, Christine uh, has been using queries for a lot of complex queries. And uh, they keep giving us valuable feedback. And we try to you know, include whatever we can in the new versions. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> OK, uh, thanks so much. So we'll continue with the session with the other topics. Uh, so let me share my screen back. OK, so we saw how uh, uh, she talked about uh, subqueries, uh, how, uh, you know, input of uh, one query, uh, output of one query can be used as an input in another query using this subquery feature, using which you can, you know, exclude a certain patients or specimens, uh, uh, you know, from a specific query. And then we saw how you can also limit aliquots uh, or specimens based on quantity 
So suppose you are looking for only uh, you know total aliquot quantity of 10 ml or 4 ml, you can add a condition so that even if there are more than that in your uh, per patient or per parent specimen, you can filter them out during the results view. This is useful for distribution. Yeah. So now let's move on to the next topic, which is temporal queries. Uh, this allows you to do calculations between two dates or numeric fields. Um, typical use case is uh, suppose you want to find time difference between two date uh, uh, or time uh, uh, fields. For example, uh, usually people want to see what was the you know time difference between the collection time and the frozen time uh, to see how much time the specimen was kept out of the freezer. Or it might be, you know, uh, you know, if you want to see uh, the patient age at different time points. So, you know, the birth date, you have not entered the age at different collection uh, dates or time points. So you want to calculate the age of the patient at different time points or uh, you want to find percentage between two numeric fields. So we'll just see how you can do all this. So for that, uh, when you go to queries. So when you're creating a new query, so you have this uh, icon here. This is used for temporal query or calculated searches and you need to add temporal expressions. So uh, when you look at it, it might, you might feel it's complicated, uh, but as you use it, uh, you know, you'll understand how to use it. And also we have a very elaborate uh, query module user manual. So if you go to calculated fields in that you have we have a lot of examples how you can use this feature and what to use in this temporal expressions based on the example uh, or use case and you see that there are a lot of temporal expressions or functions suppose you want to find months between two dates minutes between two timestamp fields year between uh, years between for example you want to find age you can use this. So uh, to use this, what you need to do is you need to start typing. So for example, I want to see, uh, uh, you know, I want to see the minutes between uh, two time point time fields. So I'll say I'll start typing and as I type, I, you see that it is, uh, you know, kind of auto filling it. And then I'll say since my uh, time difference is between two dates, that is collection date and uh, the frozen date. The first field will be the higher date. So that would be my frozen date. So when I say uh, I need the format of it would be the data that is specimen dot. When I say dot, it will show me all the numeric and date fields. And again, I can start typing if I want frozen. I'll just say frozen date and time. So this, you know, it kind of filled me up with that. And then I'm going to say I want again specimen dot collection date. I'm going to use that and if I want I can also add a condition between this that is I want only specimens uh, which were frozen within uh, say 15 minutes so I want to say uh, uh, so I'm sorry lesser than 15 minutes so I can then add a description or column header for it that is a frozen time difference or something like this and say add yeah, so this is how you can add a uh, temporal condition or a uh, condition uh, uh, condition or calculation based on two dates. And now I can say get count. Uh, oops, sorry. Added two conditions here. Yeah, so this is how I can see uh, the results. And when I add temporal conditions, so it adds that field also as a uh, you know a column here. So if you see there is new column that I added, this is my temporal column. I can add that and you can see that uh, that gets added and the frozen time difference is added here. So there are specimens which were frozen within four minutes, two minutes, five minutes and so on. So it is this, this is the time difference between the frozen date and the collection time. So this is how you can do it. And as I said, there are a lot of examples. Suppose you want to find um, age of the patient as of today. So you can use years between current date and the participant date of birth. So this will give you age as of today. Or if you want age at collection, you can say specimen dot collection date and date of birth. 
so that it will give you uh, the age as of collection. So if you see here, this is an example for age at collection. Yeah. Uh, so the other example that we wanted to see was uh, how. So we saw now the calculations between two dates. Let's see calculations between two numeric fields. So for that, uh, in the this uh, the expression uh, again you need to use the temporal expression only thing is uh, whatever calculations you want to do you can put it within that expression for example uh, let me show you i have it again in this examples yeah so if you see here uh, this is my participant extension field which is a custom field uh, so I have just done a division uh, operator here and then uh, you know multiplied by 100. So this is how you can do percent. So it is like how you use the uh, the formula, the same formula you can put it here. Similarly, uh, you know there are um, other calculations that you can do using these uh, operators. And the other useful feature in temporal uh, conditions is the date range. So let me show you that. So date range allows you to add these kind of uh, values. That is, if you want to find specimens collected in last calendar quarter or you know last month or last week, instead of putting the actual dates, you can put the value like this, uh, in, so that it will every time you run the query, it will calculate what was the dates in last week rather than you entering the dates manually. So I'll show you what I mean. So in my previous uh, query that I was talking about anticipated visits in next month, I'll show you that uh, the expression that I used. So here, if you see, I have used the word next month instead of putting, you know, for May, I need not put between May 1st to May 31st. Then I can use it only for one month and I'll not be able, you know, I need to change the dates every time. Instead of that, I can just use this text and this will replace it at the actual months, uh, you know, the dates whenever you run this query. So this is the, the that's the use of date range. So this is uh, again very useful, and you can use all these like yesterday, tomorrow, today, these kind of uh, field values you can use in your condition. So that's the temporal uh, feature. Uh, again, um, we have a lot of examples in our, uh, you know, wiki pages. You can try out. Uh, these uh, if you want if you're interested you, to use the calculated feature uh, the next feature is hierarchical queries so what this means is suppose i'm looking for child specimens based on specific characteristics of a parent so what i mean by that is in open specimen when you collect specimens so you can collect them and you can also uh, track the lineage of the specimen that is you collected a whole blood primary, you derived plasma out of it, you made aliquots, maybe from this aliquot you derive DNA and so on. So this is what we call as lineage or hierarchy of the specimens. So now suppose I want to find a specific type of aliquot, which is derived or you know uh, created from a specific type of parent. So for that, uh, we use something called as hierarchical operator. So I'll again show you one of our default queries. So if you go to the default folder, you will find a, a query. So let me just go to default queries here. So you see uh, there is this query which is showing me participant having DNA derived from tumor breast tissue. So I'll show you how that is created. So you add all the filters like I showed you before. And what you need to make sure is the parent uh, filters are added on the left and the child filters are added on the right and in between them you use this operator that you see here you use this is the hierarchical operator so what i'm saying here is if you see four and five condition it is dna collected dna so i want dna specimens derived from this type of parent that is frozen tissue and uh, you know anatomic site is breast so uh, this is how you create hierarchical queries. That is, you add all the parent conditions first and then the child condition, and in between them, you add the hierarchical condition. Uh, so, once you add this, um, then when you say view records, 
it will show the details of both the parent as well as the child columns so if you see the first columns are related to the parent that is the frozen tissue uh, sample and if i scroll to the right all the child sample uh, details are with hyphen uh, one uh, this is the first child that is why if there are more children it will show as hyphen two hyphen three and so on so this is the dna sample that was derived from that breast tumor tissue and uh, it includes the container details and also all so right now uh, you cannot select different columns for uh, parent and child it will that's why it is showing the same columns but that is one of the enhancement that is there in the road map yeah so that is the how you can do uh, searching uh, for specific child specimens based on the uh, you know uh, parent uh, there was one more uh, example you know from the registration form somebody has asked how to select child specimen say for example plasma derived from whole blood uh, which is you know collected in edt or non uh, no uh, additive so for this uh, i mean this is an example of hierarchical query but this particular example you don't have to do hierarchical query because we have added this uh, columns under if you go to collection and receive details so you see these fields so these fields can be queried at any level it can be queried at parent or child so you don't really have to do a hierarchical condition uh, query for this particular query so you can always just say collection containers equals edta and you can say specimen type equals a plasma so that will make sure that it will get plasma specimens derived from a whole blood collected in edta that's because these fields are available to be queried even at the child specimen so you can use this uh, fields to do that okay uh, so uh, the next feature is summary reports so what we saw till now was database reports that is uh, when you view the records they it is actually showing me the specimen details uh, and the patient details so one row is corresponding to one specimen so but if i want to uh, you know just see summary reports that is i just want to see count of uh, specimens uh, and then i use this summary reports uh, because there are aggregate functions that are supported in query interface like min max count uh, sum average and so on so we'll see how to add a, a summary report so now i'll say okay give me all specimens uh, collected between say i'll use this maybe 2020 january 1st till 2020 december 31st okay so last year samples uh, let me just make sure there are samples okay so now um, i'll also say i want it from a specific protocol and say view records so now what it is showing me is the actual records but i don't want to see the actual records i want to see the summary information so for that what i need to do first you select only the columns that you want to see in the summary so in my example i want to see count of specimens by type and gender so i'm going to only select those columns so i'll select gender under the participant and under specimen i'm going to select a unique field which is uh, maybe i'll choose identifier and i'll choose type and when i say next when i click on in this aggregate section when i click on a specific field i get all these options where i can do uh, aggregate functions since i want to count the specimens i am going to use this count feature and then say next in the report type you ha you can you can just see the column summary if you want or you can also create a pivot table so this is similar to if you have used in excel you can use pivot table so the row of column i will keep it as female participant gender and specimen type and value field will always be specimen count row fields you can choose more than one column is always just going to be one and when i say done so this is giving me a table a form like this so uh, this is uh, to uh, you know have just summary information 
and of course you can also save such reports you can share it with others you can schedule you know mostly these are required by biobank admins or stakeholders where you just want summary information so you can create such queries and you know you can schedule to run it every month or so on so this is how you can create summary based reports uh, based on any fields of open specimen um, and uh, you have aggregate uh, features as well and you can use it also to get a summary report for every protocol on a monthly basis so this is again you can schedule it and you can get a report like that uh, so the next feature uh, is uh, uh, when you are doing queries you have an option for let me just remove this actually i'll create a new query so it, this is useful for uh, text fields and unique uh, fields like patient ID or specimen labels. When you say is one off, you can copy paste values from an Excel over here. So suppose you have say, uh, let me see, this is a specimen label. I just copy this and I'll go under specimen label is one off or you can just copy paste the values from an Excel or any list that you have got. Okay, so here uh, you can make it parameterized, and you can also hide options and say add, and this will get added like this. And when I say view records, it will show me the specimen details for the labels that I added. Uh, here, if I want to add more values, I can do that as well. So this is how you can make it parameterize and save this query so that if you want to search specimens based on specific labels or maybe you got MRNs from a different uh, system and you just want to get specimens for those MRNs, you can you know make it parameterized and include that in your results view. Okay, so those were the main features of open specimen query interface and there are certain other uh, uh, features like when you're when you've created a query by mistake, if you want to delete it, you use this option and delete it. Uh, and if you want to uh, say you created a report on one server and you want to move that report uh, structure to another server, say from test server to production, you can export the query definition, download it and in the other server you can import it so this is how you can move from one uh, system to another um, when you're doing large queries if it is taking time it, uh, it it will give you a message and it will run in background and it will notify you whenever it is ready to download or ready to view the records uh, query audit we already talked about so every query that is run it is audited and you will be able to see the uh, query audit as an admin uh, yeah, so those were the features uh, as such. Uh, you can go to our help uh, manual, which is help.openspecimen.org, uh, which has a user manual for all features, uh, which is publicly available. You don't uh, need a, a login for this, including the reporting module. We have a lot of examples and videos, and you know uh, every feature is uh, explained in detail. Okay, so. Uh, that's it from our side. Uh, so we'll take up any questions now if you have. Uh, we do have one already. Is there a query to perform queries between protocols? Uh, diagnosis specimens are in protocol A, but derivatives of specimens. So yes, you can do between protocols as well. Uh, so instead of when you're creating query, instead of adding the condition here, you can add conditions from here. So I can say is one off and I can select multiple uh, protocols here. So this way I'll be able to query specimens across different protocols. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, are there any other questions or anything else, any other report anyone wants to see? Okay. Uh, that's i assume there's no more questions uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, we have more webinars coming up in fact uh, the next webinar would be with one of our uh, oldest uh, customer and largest uh, one of the largest in us uh, johns hopkins so it's it will be kind of a, 
uh, like an interview and also how they use open specimen so we'll send out details about it uh, so talk to you soon thanks everyone stay safe and we'll also share the recording for today